Hello everyone, welcome to Clean Copper Tops. In this video, we will see what is zero liquid discharge system, uh, what are the drivers and benefits of a ZLD system, what are the different treatment units involved in a ZLD system and what are the advantages and disadvantages of different uh, ZLD systems, uh, what is the energy consumption by different systems and finally references. So stay till the last. So zero liquid discharge is a concept wherein all the waters within a facility or a industry is recycled and reused using some or other techniques. The main uh, goal is that none of the water should go out of the system and should be recycled. So uh, zero liquid discharge is a water treatment process that aims to minimize or completely eliminate the discharge of a liquid from industrial process. So the goal is to recover and reuse all the water from a system leaving zero liquid waste at the end of the treatment process. In any industry, if you go, there are water is required for different type of operations such as cooling, washing, chemical reactions, productions, etc. When water is required, it generates a lot of waste water. The thumb rule is around 70 to 80% of water taken comes out as a waste water. It is a thumb rule. It is not specific to any industry and it varies largely industry to industry. Anyway, so the wastewater generated in any industry is highly contaminated. It contains a lot of pollutants and contaminants. Now, with respect to BOD, COD and other pollutants, the values are much higher for any industrial wastewater as compared to a sewage. Okay. So, uh, the drill system employs a combination of various technologies and processes to treat the wastewater and extract the valuable components, leaving behind only solid and salts. So, using some or other technique such as thermal treatment or reverse osmosis or membrane based techniques, uh, the idea is that water waste from wastewater, all the water should be extracted and all the waste components should be taken out as a uh, solid or semi-solid form so the treated water can then be reused within the industrial facility thereby reducing the need for fresh intake and minimizing the environmental impact the key components of a ZLD system may include evaporation crystallization reverse osmosis and other advanced water treatment technologies ZLD is particularly relevant in industries where water scarcity is a concern, environmental regulations are strict or where the cost of fresh water is high. Implementing ZLD can help industries meet environmental compliances, standards, conserve water sources and reduce overall environmental impact. So uh, what are the drivers of a ZLD system? What why an industry should go for a ZLD system? So stricter regulations on wastewater disposal. Uh, talking about India, uh, so the pollution control authorities such as Central Pollution Control Board, State Pollution Control Board are coming up with stricter norms. So it gets uh, difficult for any industry to meet those norms and therefore ZLD can help in such a situation. Intif intensified freshwater scarcity. With time the population is increasing, the industrialization is taking place and hence uh, the availability of water per head is reducing. Therefore, less water is available for even for industries and hence it is suitable that one should use ZLD system. High cost of wastewater disposal, uh, wastewater disposal option may not be feasible and public environmental awareness. These are some of the points which are drivers for a ZLD system. What are the benefits of a ZLD system? That you can comply with the environmental regulation. Uh, no cost on wastewater disposal since you are not disposing any waste you are recycling it augmenting water supply and protecting the environment okay so uh, these are the treatment units in a ZLD system in a ZLD system based on thermal processes there can be two types either thermal processes or uh, membrane based processes this is a typical schematic diagram for 
uh, ZLG system based on thermal processes. The pretreatment step involves pH adjustment, deaeration, or softening. Such steps which make the wastewater suitable for the next step, which is brine collector. Brine collector here, uh, thermal techniques such as mechanical vacuum uh, can be used wherein all the water is extracted and the wastewater is concentrated. So, pure water is extracted and it is taken back for reuse. While here, you get highly concentrated wastewater compared to this. Now, this wastewater is highly concentrated, it has all the pollutants in very, very large concentration. So, brine crystallizer it takes further all the water, and what we are left behind is solid or powder or semi solid form uh, of uh, waste which is either taken to solid disposal and recovery facilities or evaporation pond. Solid disposal recovery fa facilities such as landfill sites should be adopted only in the cases when landfill sites are, have impermeable lining beneath them. Otherwise, this disposal can uh, lead to issues such as leaching of contaminants into the groundwater which is another problem therefore disposal of solid uh, on a landfill site should be only taken when the landfill site has lining impermeable lining beneath it and uh, an evaporation pond is taken at the places where cheap land is available land is available at less cost and where the intensity of sunlight is high because uh, if intensity of sunlight is not high then evaporation won't take place therefore this is suitable for areas near to equator not for the areas towards the pole of earth another thing another issue with evaporation pond is it can lead to uh, bad odor or smell smell problems within the premises of uh, evaporation pond and it can also lead to uh, leaching in some cases contamination of groundwater so this is a typical schematic diagram for reverse osmosis in which pretreatment is taken place where pH is adjusted softening is done or uh, some kind of other treatment is provided so that the wastewater is suitable for reverse osmosis or any other membrane based process and then the steps are same as just discussed in the thermal treatment process okay So these is a very uh, beautiful comparison of different types of ZLD technologies, thermal, reverse osmosis, forward osmosis, electrodialysis and membrane distillation. These are the techniques which is used in a ZLD. However, ZLD started in, the concept of ZLD started in US in around 1970s and since then the widely used technique is a thermal technique even in plant scale, lab scale and at large scale thermal, the data, the experiments on thermal uh, based thermal options based ZLD system is there so you can talk about this much however membrane based techniques are limited mostly to lab scale or uh, more experiments on the membrane based techniques at pilot scale or industry scale is required however when you uh, see the data you can see that reverse osmosis is the one which takes least power it takes 2 kilowatt hour per meter cube of feed water However, the problem with reverse osmosis is frequent fouling and it can take up salinity to a limited level. TDS to a limited level can only take place, can only pass through reverse osmosis. However, in thermal processes, a large volume of TDS can be used. But thermal processes are highly energy intensive, so they are energy and money intensive. Other processes are also there, but uh, again, much data or much field scale or pilot scale uh, uh, experiments or results are not available. So, uh, mostly used is thermal processes in all the process in all the places. For membrane placed uh, processes, the one problem is there that fouling takes place. However, they take one, uh, less energy, but fouling takes place, which is not a good option. So you can go through, you can pause the video and go through this. This is another diagram which tells about the energy consumption and you can see that reverse osmosis takes the least energy for per unit of uh, feed water while the uh, thermal processes bind concentrator and bind crystallizer take much much higher energy. And uh, TDS level also 
this reverse osmosis takes only up to 70,000 mg per liter while other uh, processes such as brine concentrated and brine crystallizers take uh, around 3 lakh mg per liter of TDS and uh, this is required because the TDS in any industrial wastewater is much higher therefore uh, thermal based thermal treatment based uh, ZLD systems are much more suitable for any ZLD system as compared to reverse osmosis okay Finally, uh, these two videos, uh, the videos has been created based on uh, these two reference articles. These are excellent reference articles. I went through them and if you want to read more about uh, ZLD, then you must should uh, read uh, these articles. These are excellent research articles. I would like to thank them for providing such data. Thank you.